So in this question, we have Stark, and they are a manufacturer of cars. Now, that gives us some manufacturing costs that were incurred during year five. Ultimately, we need to figure out what amount of conversion costs Stark had in year five. All right, so when we think about these manufacturing costs, the next layer that these manufacturing costs can be classified at is going to be a prime cost or conversion cost. Right, so conversion costs consists of direct labor and manufacturing overhead. So as long as it's not a direct material, then it's going to be considered a conversion cost if it's incurred in the manufacturing process. So let's go through and see which of these costs would be considered a conversion cost. So on the first one, raw materials used in the finished goods. Well, if they're producing cars, this is going to be the steel, the tires, the steering wheel right? Those are considered direct materials, and those are part of prime costs. They're not part of conversion costs, so we can exclude that $50,000. How about the wages paid to employees who assemble the cars, right? So these are the assembly workers out there in the facility, putting the steering wheel on, putting the tires on, right? They're a direct labor, right? They're directly traceable cost to that car. Now, direct labor is both part of prime cost and conversion cost, but it is going to be part of conversion cost here. So we're going to include that. How about wages paid to facility supervisors? Right, so we have our manufacturing facility. We have the supervisors that make sure that production goes cleanly. And those supervisors, they are involved in the production process, but they're not directly you know, working on it. So they're not going to be direct labor. They're going to be indirect labor, but indirect labor is part of manufacturing overhead, right? So that is going to be included in conversion costs, right? So include that. How about rent for the manufacturing facility? Well, rent, anything related to the building, right? That's not directly traceable. So it's not going to be a direct material. It's going to be an indirect material, indirect cost. And so that's part of manufacturing overhead, and that will be part of conversion costs. So include that. And how about utility expense for the manufacturing facility, right? So that's gonna include our electricity, our water, our gas, right? All of those utility costs are necessary to run the manufacturing facility, but just like the rent, we cannot directly trace it to a specific product. So it's gonna be part of manufacturing overhead, which is part of our conversion costs. So we're gonna include that. And this last cost is maintenance expense on the manufacturing equipment, right? So we certainly have to incur maintenance expense to manufacture uh, products, right? So that's part of the manufacturing process, but it can't be directly related to a cost object. So it's not a direct material cost. It's going to be an indirect cost and that's gonna be part of manufacturing overhead. So it is gonna be a conversion cost. So include that 3000. So based on our analysis, right, the only thing that's going to be excluded from conversion costs because it's a direct material are the raw materials used in finished goods, right? So if we exclude that 50,000, sum up everything else, that gets us to the correct answer of $50,500, right? That represents the conversion cost for Stark. So in this question, we have some financial information for teleport industries. Now they are preparing their internal financial statements. Ultimately, we need to figure out based on this list of cost types, which would be classified as a period cost, right? And so when we think about period costs, we also have to associate that with product costs, right? Those are the two uh, categories of costs that are related to each other, right? So product costs are inventory related and then period costs can be thought of as operating expenses, right? They need to be incurred in order to run the business, but they're not necessarily related to producing the product itself. So I brought up the visual from the lecture that helps us remember the key product and period costs, but we're just gonna go through and map each of these to either product or period. And then at the end, we'll total up what total period costs should be. So the first one says steel used in production for 250,000. So the steel, that's gonna be a direct material, right? It's used to create the product that Teleport Industries sells to its end customer, right? So that cost is gonna be capitalized into inventory. So it's a product cost. 
So wages paid to factory employees for 400,000? Well, because these uh, wages are paid to factory employees, those factory employees are working on the product, right? Even if it's a supervisor that's not necessarily having their hands on the product and making it, well, they're still part of the cost that's incurred to produce the product, so they would still be a product cost, right? Now, because it says factory employees were confident that the whole amount is a product cost and no portion of it relates to a period cost. How about rent for a manufacturing facility? Well, this assumes that the facility is separate from the office building, right? And that this rent for the manufacturing facility is completely for the manufacturing facility. And since we can assume this whole facility is used to produce the product, that is considered factory overhead, right? That's gonna be part of a product cost, not a period cost. Now, if it said rent for office space for back office employees, that would be a period cost, but it doesn't, right? It says a manufacturing facility, so that's gonna be a product cost. How about salary for the CEO? Now the CEO is involved in running the business, right? But not necessarily involved directly in making the product. In general, we can assume executive salaries, which includes the CEO, would be a period cost and those would be expensed as incurred, right? So we got our first period cost. Let's see if there's any more. So this next one is legal fees. Well, legal fees, just like accounting fees, and other probably outsourced fees like this, those are always gonna be period cost and expensed as incurred, right? So we got our second amount of period costs and that's legal fees for 15,000. The last cost here is freight out and this is one students always get tripped up on, right? We have to remember that freight in is when we have to pay for freight to ship the materials to the warehouse and then you know we use the materials to produce the product. That is a product cost. Now, if it's freight out, that means we're sending it either to a retailer or a distributor, right? One of our customers. And freight out is a selling expense. It's expensed as incurred, so it's going to be a period cost. So in our table, we see that product costs are 800000 period costs total to 265000 So since the question is only asking about period costs, the correct answer is $265,000. So in this question, we have Green and they manufacture office equipment. Now, it says that Green allocates their manufacturing costs at the individual product level, right? So the product level, that's gonna be our cost object, right? And that is how they're gonna allocate both direct costs and indirect costs. So that's gonna be all these costs that are shown in the screen, right? And we are specifically focused on which the following would be considered a direct cost, so we should be thinking about directly traceable to an individual product level, right? That's the cost object. And in order for the cost to be a direct cost, we need to be able to say this could be directly traceable to that product. If it's not, but it is incurred, it's still going to be part of the product cost. Just it's going to be an indirect cost. So let's go through each of them. So the first one says electricity used to power the manufacturing facility. Well, we have to incur electricity to run the manufacturing facility, but we cannot say that relates to a specific product, right? We would have to allocate that across all the products. And so that's gonna be an indirect cost that is incurred, right? That's manufacturing overhead, but it's not directly traceable to a specific product, right? So it's indirect, that makes it incorrect. How about the employees who assemble the office furniture into finished goods? Well, they have their hands on a specific product, right? And we can say the time that is incurred to assemble that product, well, we know because it's directly traceable to that product, right? So in our visual, that's gonna be the direct labor and the assemblers that's under our direct cost band, right? So that is an example of a direct cost and that's gonna be the correct answer here. Now for the other options, it says supervisors who oversee the manufacturing facility. Well, they're part of the manufacturing process, but a supervisor, we can't pinpoint how much time they work on a specific product because they're not actually working on that specific product. So their expense is not directly traceable, right? It's indirectly traceable to the process, but not to a specific product. That makes them an indirect cost, and that's an incorrect option, right? And this last one says property taxes for the manufacturing facility, right? This is the same as the electricity. 
it's necessary for the overall manufacturing process, but we can't allocate or uh, you know say these property taxes relate to this specific product, right? It's just one of those overhead costs. Anything that is manufacturing overhead is always going to be an indirect cost, right? Or an indirect material. This is one of those subjective type questions where we need to find the option that best describes a company's product costs. Right, so we're gonna have to read through all four options here and make sure we understand which one you know best defines product costs. So first off, we need to understand that product costs, those are the costs that are incurred to produce a good that is ultimately sold to the end customer, right? And some examples of product costs include direct material, direct labor, indirect labor, manufacturing overhead, freight in, right? All of those costs are capitalized into inventory and would only be expensed when the product is sold to the customer and the company recognizes revenue. Let's go through each option. So the first one says costs that would have been saved or profits that would have been earned if another decision alternative had been selected. Right, this is talking about opportunity costing. We're gonna get to that in later modules. But when a company you know, makes a decision, right, they can either decide to incur this cost or forego the cost and they need to understand how those different opportunities ultimately impact costs or profits, right? But that's not talking about product costs, so that option's incorrect. How about costs that are relevant to any particular decision? Well, that's not necessarily specific to a product cost, right? Because period costs, product costs, those are all relevant to making a decision, right? So that's why that option's probably gonna be incorrect. How about costs that are assigned to goods or products that were either purchased or manufactured for resale, right? So that is describing product cost because we're talking about the goods itself, right? That will be, you know, purchased and resold to, uh, you know, our end customer, right? So that is describing product costs. So that's gonna be the correct answer. So real quick on this last one, it says costs that are expensed during a period and those costs that are not capitalized to a product, right? So when we talk about costs that are always expensed in the period, those are operating expenses, those are period costs, right? Costs that are not capitalized to a product, those are gonna be the period costs, but if they are capitalized to a product, that's talking about a product cost, right? So that's why that option's incorrect. Make sure you know the difference between period and product costs. So this question's really focused on prime costs versus conversion costs, and we specifically need to understand what the prime costs for Aster Company would be. So here's the visual from our lecture. Now we learned that those are both types of manufacturing costs and we can break it down one step further. So prime costs would be direct material and direct labor and then conversion costs. Well, it's also still direct labor, but it's also manufacturing overhead, right? To convert those uh, raw materials into a finished product. But again, since this is just asking for prime costs, we just need to remember that that's gonna consist of direct material and direct labor. So that's gonna be our correct answer here. 